was not Pablo, but it was a testament to the green red archetype how he mulled the five one against blue black, mulled the five one against blue black. Yeah, well, I mean, just a lot of powerful cards, a lot of things like um, the Huntmaster. Right, that guy you know? is so good. And, uh, you know, yeah, and, and he just got his card advantage back. So, even though this could be a rough matchup, you know, if he draws a lot of Huntmasters, he really could, uh, you know, all those card advantage things that out of um, Michael Dye's deck might not matter. Exactly. I mean, Michael Dye has four Day of Judgment, but that's right. it. He doesn't have the luxury of having Snapcaster Mage to flash that back. Right. He doesn't have card draw to draw into that. He used to naturally draw his four Day of Judgments. He does have Titan, though, which is... Yeah, that, you that's know, a trump right there. When, you, when you're playing green X aggro and your opponent plays a Titan, things get pretty scary. You cry into your hands, <laughs> and then you move to game two. Assuming you can't somehow attack, uh, you know, against that one. You have, like, a pretty much one turn to do that. Right. Exactly. Just smash your guys in and hope it's enough. Yep. All so, right. important for Pablo here to win the die roll. He, he would love to do that. And they're looking at the hand at the same time, so really can't tell. Nope. Michael won the die roll, it sounds like. Yeah, and we're going to get you a, a rundown on the deck list in just a few minutes here. Ooh, Pablo goes down. Yeah, I, I think I saw some incinerates in Pablo's hand. He just he knew he couldn't keep a hand with only with little pressure against Michael Dye. Yeah, um, you know, being able to kill Michael Dye's uh any acceleration and accelerators he has is good, but he doesn't have that many. Yeah. I think he has one birds of paradise. Oh that's it? Yeah. Wow. To Green Sun for. So yeah, Pablo Ortega has full knowledge of the matchup. They got to review each other's deck list beforehand, so Pablo knows what hands he has to mulligan and what hands he can keep. I'm sure he would love a hand with a turn one accelerant and uh, a lot of creatures. Not much burn. <laughs> Burn's not good in this matchup. Only one of these players will move on to the finals. Only one has the chance to become your Star City Dallas Open champion. Standard champion. Standard champion. Either one could still become a Dallas champion. Dallas you know, that's, champion. that's true. We're going to give away four championships today. <laughs> draft open one, draft open two, standard legacy. They would love to go back to back, though, standard they, and legacy. That is, that is the dream. Yeah. That has not happened many times. I think exactly once. Exactly once. Jerry T., the legend, the Star City Open the Circuit man, legend. The myth, the legend, <laughs> Jerry Thompson. The Tombstone Man. We've come close a few other times, too. Yeah. Yep. A lot of people have top eighted both days. Uh, I know there's at least one person who won one and finals the next, but uh, I think you're right. I think Jerry is the only person to actually get both. He had to, so he had to settle for second. Second in the Legacy Open. That's, that's tough, you know? <laughs> only taking first and second in the two biggest it, tournaments of the I weekend. Th I think no matter what, you can say it's a pretty successful weekend. <laughs> Not bad. Not too bad. So Pablo shuffles up. His deck is sufficiently randomized. He believes in sufficient randomization. I, pr I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just get lazy and I don't shuffle as much as I should. And lo and behold, looks like oh, looks like he's on five already. Five cards. That would explain all the shuffling. And I think he's found an acceptable five. <clears throat> acceptable fives are a lot easier to find <laughs> than uh, good sevens. Yeah. And you know, I think it's something about these cam about this camera. These these red green players just cannot keep an opening hand on camera. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Here he is, turn two, and he has no green mana. Michael Die, first play of the game. Um, so guy called uh, Viridian emissary. emissary. Turn three, Viridian Emissary. Pablo Ortega misses his third land drop. No green mana. Not a blazing start for Michael, but you know, with as far behind as Pablo is. Yeah, it looks like it'll we'll be take enough. Whatever he can get. Really, Michael can sort of take his time in this match. Yeah, he can. Pablo's giving him all the time in the world. Has no permanent, no non-lands in play. And there goes the green. Copperline Gorge <laughs> brings out a birds. The old turn five birds of paradise. That no. is, again, not what you want. No, not even close. We'll see if Michael Dye can punish him with an acidic slime. No, wow, wow just wow. going yeah, five mana. A really slow hand. Interesting that he didn't attack with the uh, Viridian Emissary. Very interesting. Probably playing around some sort of Hellrider shenanigans from Pablo Ortega. 
I think we're going to see a Hunt Master here. Yep, there comes the Hunt Master. So Pablo Ortega back up to 20, and all of a sudden, he's back in this game. His yeah. opponent has no plays, kept a slower hand. I imagine Michael Dye must have a, uh, a Primeval Titan or something here. I would think so. I don't know why else would have kept his hand. And does he cap? Yeah, he does. He does. He's going to get a Mountain and uh, probably a Wolf Run. Nope, a Nexus and... Should be a Wolf Run here, I think. Oh, a ghost quarter. ghost quarter. Okay. I'm a little surprised at his choice of lands. If, if I was Michael Dye, I would just be trying to kill Pablo as fast as possible, I think. Though, I mean, my, uh, Pablo is going to be very hard-pressed to actually kill a Primeval Titan. That's true, too. This game for Pablo will not end with a bang, but with a whimper here. It's going to be really hard for him to, uh, to even deal six to that. He can wolf run his creatures and trade. But that's not a winning proposition. Michael Dye gains four lands in the process. No, I, I think that... Oh, the okay. Ravager flips. He's probably going to... Um, Shoot the that, Titan. Yeah, he's, he's probably going to... Maybe he has double incinerate. He has or double I, something, double Galvanic Blast, some way to kill that Titan. Yeah, I, I think what he's doing is just making it so that uh, any one creature... We'll be able to trade with a wow I'll mimic, mimic that. that. Yeah, that's gonna be rough. Now, Michael gets to attack, and if he blocks with that Ravager, he's gonna get a, a permanent Titan. Yeah, and you know, Pablo Ortega does not have many ways to kill that mimic that. He can Rexian Metamorph it to have a dueling mimic that. He can Acidic Slime it. But that's it. That's all he yeah. has in the main deck. And even if he Acidic Slimes it, you know, if he, if he blocks a Titan here. Um, Michael is still going to get one more, um, one more Titan, two more lands. Right, and then the attack phase too. Yeah. Four more lands. So yeah, Pablo. I, I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, next to impossible for Pablo to win this game. Michael Dye has one, hard. two, three, four, seven, eleven lands in play. Yeah, he is not far from just being able to one shot him with uh, the Wolf Run. Right. Yeah, he's, he's four lands away at this point. When four lands the Titan is not a whole lot. No. That's almost the perfect number with that Mimic that in play. Looks like... Uh, Block with Wolf Token. Mm, yep. Kessig Wolf Run my Wolf. Trade with your Primeval. I think Michael will take that. Yeah, Pablo Ortega takes four Trample damage, dropping to 16. More importantly, though, the Primeval Titan goes under the Mimic that. Into the Vat, Titan. Oh, yes. Into the Vat once more. And a worm coil Quilch. engine. <laughs> Michael think, die with the rubbins. Yeah, insult to injury here. He didn't need that. I mean, you still play it because you, of you know. You never know what'll happen. You never know. An acidic slime could uh, take out the moon fat, and maybe a few other things could happen. But uh, <clears throat> yep. Okay. Oh, and that uh, hot master did flip too. Yep. So Pablo Ortega up to 18. Another wolf. A little more blocking, but. All of that has to still deal with Primeval Titan. Yep. More importantly, even if he can deal with the Nexus, even if he can deal with the Titan, Michael Dye has four Ink Moth Nexus in play. That is almost impossible for Pablo Ortega's deck to beat. He has two Gal Blast to Incinerate as his only real ways of interacting. Yep, and he passes back to Michael Dye. I imagine Michael's going to uh, use the Mimic that right here, make another Titan token. You know, I think he just might. Uh, then he'll have plenty of mana to uh, <laughs> to use on a wolf run if he feels like it. It almost looks like he's laying his deck out for a deck tech, the way he has all <laughs> his lands lined up here. He's going to have to shuffle very well after this game. Yeah. The old 2-1-2-1-2-1. Two, one, two, one, two, one. <laughs> I would not suggest a 2-1-2-1-2-1. Two, one, two, one, two, one. Oh, then you just pile shuffle and you're good, right? Oh, yeah. Pile shuffling is very random. Yeah. Totally. <sighs> For those of you who are interested in uh, randomization, Rob Doherty wrote a, a pretty interesting article uh, many years ago about pile shuffling, about randomization. Uh, worth a read. You can pr probably find it in the Wayback yeah, there, Machine. There was uh, somebody, uh, Mike Long, uh, there was a, a, yes. an, an incident where he, he had a four of a card in a, in a draft. Basically a squadron hawk type card. Right, and he would uh, he didn't you know ripple his deck, he just pile shuffled it to make sure that 
supposedly, to make sure that he'd always have one in his top ten cards. Exactly. Always drew exactly one, no more than right. one. Of course, never proven. Mike Long was never banned for that. but uh, Not for that. Back then, they weren't. They, they didn't really ban many players for things like that. Yeah, uh, it was a little more Wild Westy. Yeah. All right, so Michael Dye coming in. Primeval Token, Emissary, and a Worm Coil. Yep. Four lands were fetched this turn from that Primeval. And, so uh, he is uh, more than lethal with a green with a, a wolf run uh, any time on an Inkmoth Nexus. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> Pablo packs it in. Too far behind, not much he can do. Yeah, a really a really poor draw from Michael Dye, but an even poorer one from Pablo Ortega. It didn't even matter that Michael Dye's first play was uh, turn six Titan besides yeah. the emissary. Yeah. And really, you know, Michael Dye, if if Pablo had had a really good hand. He still might have. He still would have been in the game because he would have been able to, uh, you know, play a turn five uh, Titan. Right. Exactly. Because that uh, that emissary would have blocked. So looking uh, ahead to the sideboards here. Um, Let's see what we have. All right, so we have Michael Dye again. He is playing uh, green-white ramp, and so in his sideboard he has another Minic Fat, a Thrun, two Ancient Grudges, an Autumn Veil, four Timely Reinforcements, Naturalized and Surgicals. I have to think the Timely's going to come in right now. That, that seems like uh, a pretty good card in this matchup. Uh, a lot of these other cards, you know, Thrun's not bad, but I, I don't know that you want to actually bring that in. I think you just stick with that Timely Reinforcements for, uh, maybe he's got a Red Sun Zenith that might not okay. be doing a whole lot. Card Liberated seems a little uh, high-end. Yeah, definitely a little slow. We're going to look at sideboards in a couple minutes, but for right now, we actually have a trivia question for you guys. So if, if you're unfamiliar with how this works, here it is. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Now, you can tweet in with an answer. Uh, it has to be the correct answer, and you have to use the hashtag SCG Premium. You can address it to SCG Live oh, over there. <laughs> you can address it to me. You can address it to Sam if you want, but you have to use the hashtag SCG Premium. And if you do, if you get the right answer, we will randomly select one of the right answers to win six free months of Star City Premium. You don't have to have an account. If you don't, we'll make one. We'll give you six free months. And uh, if you have an account, yep. we'll tack it on. Uh, we'll, exactly. we'll add it to your account. If you already have premium, you get six more months. Right. Exactly. So here's the question you have until the end of this match to answer. The question is of the archetypes in the top eight, only one deck was represented twice. What was this deck? So tweet in your answer with the hashtag SCG Premium. The decks had a few different cards, but uh, right. you know, I think overall. Same overriding archetype. I think we can call it the same archetype. Yes. So, uh, with these sideboards, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you that Karn is just way too slow if against you, Pablo Ortega. If you're Ortega. getting to that point, you, you, know, you just don't need it anymore. Right, you've probably already won. And, uh, you know, and I, I think the other card, at least at least Red Sun Zenith, is not not particularly good in this matchup. You know, it gives you a way to kill uh, Wolf um, or Hunt Masters, but I don't know that you really need that. No, I, d I don't think you're really worried about the Hunt Masters. I, I don't think that uh, Michael Dye needs to one-for-one one here. I think he's instead just looking to stay alive and, until he can uh, go big. Go big or go home. What do you think of timely reinforcements? Yeah, I think that's the card you bring in. Would you, you bring, bring in all four? I think you bring in all four. I wow. mean, I think the only way that he loses this matchup is uh, is if he dies before he gets to cast his big spells. And timely reinforcements certainly is the card you want to uh, to, to stop that. And plus, you know, with um, with Pablo having Huntmaster. That generate, you know, gets him life. Right. So it, it gets him life, it gets him more creatures, so it makes Timely even more likely to actually uh, go off. Yeah, assuming your opponent has cast a Huntmaster, almost definitely uh, it'll it'll be with both modes enabled. So yeah, I could definitely see him bringing in all four. How about Naturalize? You know, I, um, let's see, uh, I don't know about Naturalize. Like, he already has... Uh, we have to assume that Pablo has swords somewhere, right? Even though he didn't see any swords, um, and and the, well, he knows he knows the deck list, and looks like uh, Pablo has three War and Peace, one Feast and Famine. So, and those are the only targets. Yeah, those are the only targets, and he only has another. Uh, he doesn't have any more Feast and Famines to actually bring in. 
Right. So I don't think you have to worry about it. I think you, you hold back your green sun zenith to possibly get an acidic slide. I, th I think you're right. I, I wouldn't board in such a narrow card as naturalize. Because if they draw the sword, you don't draw the naturalize. It's bad for you. Right. And especially yeah. bringing in timeline reinforcements, you know. Uh, if Feast and Famine is one you're really worried about, and uh, those timeline reinforcement tokens are pretty good at blocking Feast and Famine. That's true, too. Uh, so Pablo... Looking at Pablo's sideboard, the card that jumps out to me is Traitor's Blood. Yeah. That card is amazing versus any any uh, any primeval titan deck. I agree. He, you know, the way he's going to win this game is getting a fast start. Michael Dye is going to cast the turn four, five, or six primeval titan, and Pablo is going to Traitor's Blood it. Yep. I'll that take seems, that, he says. Yep. I'll search up my wolf friend, too. <laughs> that seems like his best plan, and those will definitely come in. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I have to imagine, um, well, we might see some surgicals, we might not. It's uh, it's hard to tell. I, I, I don't think that it's actually that good in this matchup. Uh, I, I think that it's just a card that if you draw it and they don't draw, you know, anything that you can actually surgical early on, you're just so far behind. Right. It's also it's also really tough to actually um, get a primeval titan in the graveyard for for Pablo's and deck. We're going and uh, Pablo has the fast start. He has gone forest forest uh, forest forest bird and a stranger guys. Yeah, and you wow, Michael died another just bird. Uh, Clip Thought Treat. Yeah, Pablo has now two birds of paradise. He is threatening uh, anything from uh, Huntmaster to Hellrider sword to equip sword equip next turn. Yeah. That's very, very good Radiant Emissary is definitely going to block if it can. Uh, oh, Ooh, a second Strangler guys. guys. These things are coming down. So if those swing in, Michael Die will block to stem the bleeding. That'll just make that card bigger, though. That it Geist. will. It will. Now, he does get a, another land. Uh, you know, he, that he is threatening to have Wrath next turn. Mm -hmm. He certainly has the mana for it. But he has to actually uh, have one in his hand, and then... Uh, not seeing his hand, I do not. I cannot tell if he actually has a wrath or not. I don't think so. I didn't see one in there previous. And if he does, uh, now wrath will do a lot, but it will still leave one Strangler Geist alive. Right. Pablo though is down to two cards. Yeah, those so. Birds of Paradise. They're great at getting him a fast start, but they do not do well against Day of Judgment. Yeah. Michael died drawing a Rampant Growth for his turn. That's not a day. Nor does he even have a second White Source. Ooh. Timely reinforcements, yes. It's time. This is the card that turns this matchup, uh, I, I think, really gives Michael the huge advantage of this matchup. And here we go. Three tokens, enough to stop uh, some more Strangaroo Geists. Yeah, and Michael die up to 22 yeah. life. Yeah. Pablo crashes in with both. He's going to double block one and block the other one and, and really leave Pablo down pretty far. Yeah. Oh, this is five, five mana. mana. Is this going to be an Acidic Slime? No, it's a... Uh, yeah, it is it's a Slime. slime. That'll take out that white one of those white sources there. Looks like the green, green white, white source. Yeah. Making it harder and harder for Michael Dye to actually cast a Wrath of God when he draws one. Right. Michael Dye's mana is pretty good, but that doesn't guarantee that he has the Wrath of God mana on turn four. Wow, no, no, no attack. And it looks like Michael Dye drew a Garrick Relentless. Hmm. If he can cast that, that can take out a Stranger Geist. Um, and he will be able to then, next turn, sacrifice token to get a big creature. There goes the Garrick. Now the question is, does he token or does he fight? I think I just make a token here. Yeah, I, I think if I'm the Garrick player, I just turn out tokens. Pablo Ortega can't really can't really wipe them all at once. He's going to have to draw a Hellrider if he wants to, yeah. to get rid of that Garrick. Hellrider is the card he wants right now. And boy, Hellrider is great at fighting Planeswalkers, isn't it? It is very good at it. In comes uh, a whole bunch of creatures. I imagine that uh, all that uh, Pablo's going to have left at the end of this is going to be one Geist with an Undying counter on it. Yeah, it, it looks like it. Michael Dye wants to keep his Garrick alive as long as possible. So the board state after this attack phase is going to be uh, Bird, Bird, Geist with a counter versus Garrick. Assuming Pablo, of course, doesn't have a removal spell here, and he doesn't. And even if he does, that's not too bad for Michael. Right. I mean, he still does get to churn out these uh, wolf tokens. Yeah, Garrick Relentless is going to be very good here, unless Pablo can deal with it soon. Yeah. And I, I think I saw him unnaturalize in Michael Dye's hand. So he didn't listen to us, did he? He did not listen to us. That was a mistake. I mean... The naturalize is, is only good when they draw the sword and you draw the naturalize. It's, it's bad in every other combination. 
And even there, I mean, you know, it's it's not the the war and peace is just not that impressive. Right. It's good. Which is the one I, Pablo is more of. Yeah. yeah. I, I am not gonna uh, you know be upset with having a war uh, sort of war and peace in play, but in this matchup, it is not as good as it would be in other matchups. Right. Especially at this, you know, as like. At this point in the game, I think Michael Dye has four cards in hand. War and Peace is good, but Michael Dye can empty his hand if he wants to. So Rampant Growth is cast for Michael Dye, gets his second white source, so he will be able to cast a Day of Judgment on command. But he doesn't really need to right now. No, he can just sit back as long as he wants to and just churn out these tokens. Yeah, you know, Michael Dye making it look easy in this top four match. Pablo Ortega is just unable to put any real pressure on him. Pablo just needs to draw a Hellrider really soon. Drawing his uh, Feast and Famine would would not be bad either. No, that that would be really good. Uh, if if he, of course he can catch uh, if he can catch Michael tapped out. Right. And it looks like Michael Die finishes shuffling up and uh, passes the turn. I'm not. I think they might be having a conversation with the table judge right now. Oh, but they've resolved it. Yeah. Oh, that wolf goes down. Yeah. As does the Garrick yeah. Relentless, it looks like. Unless, of course, Michael Dye has something here. Looking through his list, though, he doesn't have many instants he can cast. Yeah. Yep, Garrick and down. There they go down. Garrick, though, did a lot of work. He Garrick traded with lot, multiple creatures in the Galvan class. Garrick saved a lot of damage. Right. That's a better way to put it. Yeah. Michael is at... A, a very healthy life total, and out comes Primeval. Yeah, it puts the Primeval Titan from the top of his deck directly yeah. into play. And he'll go search up the lands. He'll start this fun process. Now, barring a Traitorous Blood, uh, Pablo does not have a lot of ways to deal with that uh, that Titan right now. No, I mean, even even Traitorous Blood, with Michael die at 22 life, a very, very healthy 22. It, it does something, but you know it, uh, it's it's going to crash in, take Michael down, or actually Michael still will be at double digits yeah. if a traitor's blood happens. But he's at least lower. He could have a uh, doubles play to kill it. He could have green, green sun, sun for four. 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 I'm not sure what four does for him. I, I think it it might get a hell rider. It might get no, I can't a hell rider. It might get a hunt master uh, or a thrun, but. Yeah. Nothing uh, that's going to deal with that uh, Primeval Titan. No, nothing in Pablo Ortega's deck is as big as that Titan, and it's it's not even really close. Right. He, he can block and kill it next turn. Right, but that's that's not going to do it. Yeah. It'll have already gotten four he's, lands. He's going to lose a lot of cards over that. So they shuffle each other's decks. Pablo Ortega has no real choice but to pass the turn back. Up to 22. Both players at 22. Pablo Ortega with a lot more permanence, but that one Titan just dominates the battlefield. And Michael Dye draws an Ancient Grudge. Can't say I'm a fan of his sideboarding in this match, but it seems like the raw power of the Titans. It doesn't matter how many cards he has uh, that don't do anything right now. And in it comes. We will see uh, how Pop how Pablo blocks this. Maybe you just have to take it. Hope to draw something. I think if he blocks, he has no shot. If he takes it, he can at least trade his blood uh, at some point. Well, he on, can, on. Uh, if he has a, Gal a Galvanic Blast in play, he can protect himself from those Ink Moth Nexuses. Right. At least one of them. And uh, he does have a few ways to... He can Devil's Play to just kill the Titan. Yeah, yeah, he can. That would be a great draw for him. Also gives him a way to kill, uh, kill a second Titan. Right, though we know that if he had... Uh, if he had that, he would have played it last turn. Right. We'll see how Michael Dye... Uh, Michael Dye whoop. now has all the manas. <laughs> and what is he going to... You know, he's he's not... He's got a hand, so he's going to keep casting things. Yeah, he's, he's not going to be wolf running this turn. Could wow. Day of Judgment. Day of Judgment. Wipes the board. Everything goes away. Except Michael Dye, you know, he seems to be left with a few man lands there. He does a few man lands. Now, would you have played a day right there? I guess the Huntmaster's flipping. He didn't cast anything else, and so that could be a problem. With Pablo out of gas, I don't think it's unreasonable to play the day, especially since Michael Dye has, seems to have this game on lockdown. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Michael Dye didn't side out the Karn, and he just drew it. 
So he has so many great options. He can do anything he wants right now. I think he has another Titan. He has a Karn. We'll see what he chooses. Looks like the Karn. Yep. Boom. Plus four. Pablo Ortega out of cards. Six lands in play. Forest under that Karn. Oh. He needs to draw Hellrider to have any shot right here. And even then, you know, I, I'm not even sure what Hellrider does. No, it, it'll knock Karn down a little bit, but... Matthew, uh, Michael Dye gets to next turn plus four Karn again. Make sure he doesn't have a little Galvanic Blast, and then go crazy with Wolf, Ramp on, Wolf Run on a uh, Inkbot Nexus. Yep, Pablo Ortega's turn consisted of putting Inkbot, or putting Kessie Wolf Run from the top of his deck into play, and that's it. Um, so unless Michael Dye messes up on a extreme order of magnitude, he will be <laughs> moving on to the finals. Yep, and he is uh, just passing the oh, Titan. That's it. Nothing much, just a not, Titan. Not bothering with the whole uh, ink moth plan. No. Gets more lands, trying to build up to that magic number of uh, 14. That's how many lands it takes to have a lethal ink moth nexus. But he can come in with two nexus high, two next high this turn. Yep. Michael Dye is up to three poison from that attack. He got one last turn. And uh, next turn we'll do it. Karn will clear out the hand, make sure there's no funny business going on. The hand or whatever he draw draws. Oh. Uh, land or else. Simply a land or else. Not, not long for this world. No. Doesn't need to kill it, I guess. He can just uh, poison over, but. Yep. Hellish <laughs> El 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 Norn, Norn for good measure. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because why not? And he's, I think he looks like he's just going to cast the Elish Norn. It's certainly the more fun route. It is his more fun route. A little bit of rubbins. Yep. You know, if, if you're Michael Dye here, if you, if, if you really, really, really want to go the fun route, you just start removing your Titans, you start removing your Elish Norns, restart the game. So you know, Let's try this one again. That's a little far. <laughs> I don't think I'd do that. That's not e little, not even on camera. <laughs> that's a ca thing you do in a casual game. Do not do that in a tournament. <laughs> Certainly yeah, not in the televised is, uh, top four. He's going to Elish Norn. It looks like, oh, maybe he's not. I think he might be realizing that he can just kill his opponent here. It's possible. That seems like the route I would go. You know, a little surprising to me that Pablo Ortega hasn't scooped out his cards yet. Well, there's always a chance. Michael Dye could uh, accidentally draw a card. He yep. could... Uh, uh, Have a seizure. A lot of different things would happen. So there we go. Titan trigger resolves. He's getting more lands. Yep. And I imagine we're going to see a wolf run uh, tapping and targeting that nexus. We're right here. I think we might. And if we do, Michael Dye will be moving on to the finals. Carefully shuffles his deck, and here we go. This is the wolf run. Three, Four. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten mana, plus seven, plus oh. An eight, one, and handshake. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations to Michael Dye. He, he moves on to the finals. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Green-white wolf run, not a uh, deck that we were uh, we predicted early on in the tournament. No, you know, it, it had some popularity around... Uh, around the, the last Invitational in Charlotte. It had some popularity around Worlds, but he really dropped off the face of the earth here. Uh, comes back in a big way, Michael Dye in the finals of the tournament.